welcome. This is Mabbit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. I am sitting here trying to work out whether I should confess to you this horrible secret of me as a marketer. SEO is one of the things that I least enjoy about marketing. There is something about it that messes with my brain and even though I innately know how it works, I know the benefits of it and I use it all the time. If I read anything about SEO, my brain just starts going la 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 and I don't know what it's on about. And that is why I am so thankful that we have Ben today, Ben Mayo, from Team Empathy coming and talking to us about how to not make SEO very scary. Ben is one of the most beautifully extroverted, loving, kind and warm people I have ever come across. He is young, but he has spent the last seven years as an entrepreneur Um, He started with a dog training business. We have bonded over our love of dogs, a CrossFit coaching, and then he started an SEO company with his cousin, Stephen, and they went from being a small business to an award-winning marketing agency. He sold that business and since then has created another business called Team Empathy to return to his roots of working in the sustainability and ethics space. He is really fascinated around helping people with SEO and obviously uses it himself for his own business. So I'm really looking forward to having him make me feel better about SEO and taking you along that journey with me to help us all understand what SEO is, by the way, it's search engine optimization, and whether we should be using it and why can we, how and why can we make it easier for ourselves. So let's jump in and listen to Ben Mail. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Map It Marketing. I'm really excited today because I have just told our guest, Ben Mayo, that his job today is to change my mind. And I've had my mind changed on this podcast before. I had it with Michelle J. Raymond when she talked about um, all the things around LinkedIn company pages. And I've had my mind changed around um, different things around courses and other areas. But SEO, I think, will be the hardest thing to change my mind around because I have an almost um, phobia around it I use it all the time Ben I promise but I have a phobia about it I think it's just my brain is just not created in a way where I find any conversation about SEO interesting I know the basics I've used keywords and things like that I use them for research but I have an issue with it and I know that my clients and I think your clients too um, also have similar blocks so I'm really keen to get you to change our minds because I know it's your love Um, and first before we get Ben to introduce himself because he's just quietly going my gosh does she give me room to breathe um I want to thank anyone here who's joining us for the first time do if you really enjoy this um, listen to some more episodes hit subscribe if you've enjoyed it so you can learn more and um, there are there will be some linked episodes that I recommend link to this in terms of topics in the show notes too along with Ben's information so that you can um, learn and enjoy from this and from other ones that we're doing but let's just get into this Ben Mail, welcome to Map It Marketing. <laughs> I let you breathe. I didn't take a breath during the whole bit of that. That was impressive, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's my years of singing experience. I can just talk oh, yeah. breath in between. Now, um, I would love everyone to know about you because you've got quite an interesting past. Now, we did bond originally because we both have a firm believer in dogs being a central part of our lives. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can also see that this is a video that we're doing now. You've got a monster um, plant in the background as well, which yeah. is also like a key part of my life at the moment. I am now a plant mother and I am totally obsessed with my monsters. <laughs> so tell us a bit about you. Absolutely. Um, funny that you mentioned with SEO as well being something that you've got blocks on, you don't really enjoy because... I'll backtrack a little bit, but I 100% had the same opinion and completely fell into SEO as a fluke. So it's funny that I'm so into it now. I do a lot of it and I'm fairly passionate about it as well. Um, My journey with SEO and entrepreneurship started all the way back in 2015. Yeah. So back then I was, I just finished uni actually. Um, So I had my honours degree, came out of that and I was figuring out what I wanted to do with, with work. And back then I was thinking, I'll just go work for a cool sustainable or 
ethical company because that's my ethos mm. and that'll be me done so i ended up doing some part-time work for an electric car hire company called blue cars mm. and this is way back when evs didn't actually really exist in new zealand this is like yeah that was early days charging networks or anything yeah so it was um it was super early days um so i joined a guy who um was um used to work for tesla and um we were renting out nissan leaf so that was my part-time job and i was doing my whole eco warrior thing and loving it but I had a lot of spare time, so it was a very casual role. So at the same time, I was also coaching CrossFit, and I still do that now as well. It's been about eight years, so CrossFit's just functional fitness, run around, throw stuff around, and be super fit. I was a CrossFit coach, and at the same time, I was also um, a new dog dad because my two boys were born on um, Feb 9, 2015. And um, so it was a birthday a couple of days ago. They're seven now. Oh, very cute. Yeah. So we had, um, we had a little birthday cake for them a couple days ago. I'm glad that you're not the only one that does that. We had to do that for our, one of our dogs. Yeah, like, 100%. It's number necessary. nine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing all of that in 2015, raising the boys, um, coaching CrossFit, doing this part-time work. Um, but I still have a bit of extra free time. And um, I was playing around with starting my own business or, I, or getting into, say, my own business. And I actually started with this book my cousin gave me called zero to 1k by Ramit Satai and it's about kind of like how to earn your first $1,000 um, doing your own thing and he talked about doing what you're passionate about so I gave um, dog training a go so I was super passionate about dog training and psychology at the time I was learning heaps so I, I built my own web space uh, my own website sorry on Squarespace and um, started doing dog training for people all around Auckland and I did that for probably a couple of years part-time in the weekends um, and that was my first little taste of getting into entrepreneurship. And then later that year, um, I ended up joining my cousin um, who was freelancing SEO. So this is the tie-in at the time. And I just I just joined him at his, um, it was called Iron Bank, share space, and I just helped him out with SEO. And I kind of got the whole vibe of being in a shared space. There were free coffees, there was kitchen space, you could hang out with people. And I was like, this is kind of a cool vibe. Because you're and, quite extroverted too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So it was a cool shift, like going into this new space every day. Um, so it was it was me and Stephen and one of his other friends who joined us. We were like, let's make a company. And then one of our, what the other friend dropped off pretty quickly in, in a few months. And it was just Stephen and I. So we're like, let's do it. So um, yeah. So long story short, we um, we grew an SEO business out of the ground end of 2015. And over the next four years, we grew that into like a full service digital marketing agency. So we did the whole shebang and we used hubspot and we did all the bells and whistles and then we sold that business in 2019 and off the back of that i created team empathy and what i wanted to do this time around was run my own business this time and kind of create that whole ideal lifestyle that i wanted to be able to hang out with my dogs as much as possible while doing work and i knew i wanted to work in the environmental and social space and i was like how can i do that so I was like, why didn't I exist? Um, why didn't I use my pre-existing knowledge that I've already got my marketing skill set and double down on something I know I can scale well for me that was SEO because I knew I could build a team around that. So I went into that. So I started Team Empathy. I got a few clients on. It was it was 2020, I think, when I started that. Yeah, it was. That was like when COVID first hit. Um, so I had a few clients before then and slowly but surely organically grew over the year until until we can now. So now I'm running Team Empathy which is a company that serves um, impact driven businesses. So social and environmental businesses and our whole goal is to scale their ripple of impact. So all the good work that they're doing in the world, jump on board and help them grow. And I've um, kind of cut back on everything else that I used to do from a full service point of view. And now it's just SEO and marketing coaching are kind of like the two things that I do and help cool businesses do good stuff in the world. So that's awesome. Now, um, I actually have, um, you know, we've, we've, we've done a few, different podcasts and things which I'm, I will link actually in the show notes with people that also work with impact or those people that are really have a business that fits in that sustainability space and it is I think one of the things that you did with that that I've only recently been brave enough to do for myself and, and I do think that it, there is this beautiful um, liberation you get when, when it's your own business and you're solo and you're building it right from scratch you can decide to what I call narrow the arrow or narrow that that mm. focus right down um, for me I've only just done it for myself because my business now is at a place where um, I've got other people doing specialities and I was really worried that if I marketed where I want to go which for me is building people who really want to build a personal brand to grow their business that's my thing that really lights me up oh. um, 
to do that and separate it out was a very scary thing. So I was like, but what if it doesn't do that? I love that you've stuck to what you're really passionate about and then kind of fed that knowledge into it because it's so powerful. Yeah, yeah. We we tried to um we tried to do that when we started Inbound. So 2015, yeah. we're like, let's let's work for sustainable companies, and we called our business Clean. It was like clean.org.nz and we try to hustle all the sustainable business network members to become our clients. Yeah. <laughs> and it was our first time running a business and it just didn't work, you know, and you freak out and you're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to make this work? So yeah, it was always something I wanted to do, but, but couldn't do. Um, but now that I gained all that experience, I could then do it. So it felt very, um, very empowering to do it. Yeah. And I think for you too, like, I love that you're focused on the marketing coaching, which is something we do as well. But then your other side is that SEO, which isn't something that is my strength. But for us, we have that side with that automation like, and, and that digital, that sort of side. And I mm -hmm. do think that that is one of the things, and you would, I think you'd agree with me that for a lot of marketing agencies or people that are doing some little bit of doing with uh, advising and strategy work, the biggest mistake they make is to go really broad and become, you know, a full service agency because you have to employ a lot of people to make that work or you're just yeah. doing generally shit work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you might be stars in an area, but you either have to employ another star to fix it and you might not have enough work because that's what happened to me originally. I had a big business and I did all these mouths to feed and actually um, some of them weren't great at what they were doing. It wasn't their fault. It was mine for employing them in that space. Some were great, but I had to feed this channel of people mm -hmm. to do it and this pressure. And I think I love that you've kind of opted out of that and you've created this business around <laughs> your dogs yeah. and CrossFit and other things you're doing as well. Yeah. So, okay, so we've mentioned that phrase SEO and let's just go right back to the thing because I know I quite often mention it when I'm delivering a strategy to a client, I'll go SEO and then after five minutes of chatting about it, they'll go, um, Rachel, could you please tell me what you're talking about? I don't know what SEO yeah. means. So let's go with that first. What would you say to someone, or I'll ask you, if I said to you, what is SEO? What would you say? So SEO stands for, it's an acronym, Search Engine Optimization. And basically it's the process of ranking at the top of Google. So figuring out how to rank at the top of Google so that when people search for the things that you do, flower delivery Auckland or whatever it is, um, or something near me, that you're the one that pops up at the top of Google and you're the one that pops up on that map and people come and find you. Yeah, your virtual storefront. And I think that one of the things with this is that I, I often have a lot of, and I'm sure you do too, a lot of um, business owners who come and say, can you do Google AdWords? We don't do it. We don't personally do a lot of Google AdWords. And I'll be like, but I'll be saying, oh, well, actually, I wouldn't recommend that right now because your SEO needs work first. So we need to get, we need to check your organic marketing is working well before you add. And so do you think that people often go, oh, Google or SEO, they kind of lump it in with AdWords and go, that's the solution. And they don't see there's a whole other thing underneath. Yeah, a lot of people think Google ads are SEO. Um, yes. it's, oh, it's advertising. So that is probably the, the biggest point that I try to make obvious. A lot of the time when I explain things, I share my screen. So I'll be showing like a search, like flower delivery orphan. I'm like, hey, see those first three to four, you know, results that have a little things that add next to them. You know, that's people paying to get there and they have to do that every single day, every single week. They're not there organically. So organically is the word that we'll probably use quite a bit today as well. And mm -hmm. that means you're not there on the ads. You're, you've done the hard work and you're ranking number one or two at the top of the natural results or the organic results, which is something that once you've built it, I mean, you do have to do a little bit of continual work to make sure it stays there, depending on how competitive the space is. But that just means you've got so much more potential because if you look at them on two sides, Google ads, if you stopped your Google ads, you wouldn't be on Google anymore. Exactly. But if you stopped your SEO, you'd be on Google for a long time, you know, yeah. months or however long before you started dropping down or whatever it was. And I think, um, I think one of the things for both of us, the ironic thing for both of us is that us both trying to um, rank first for SEO, for marketing agency, for example, would be one of the very worst things that we would try and do because we're going against marketers who, except for me, I'm terrible at SEO, but lots of it, who are great SEO and you're trying to be beat them out and actually win over them. And some of the full-time SEO agencies where they've got this big tribe of people where they're just pumping all these clever little keywords in to make that happen. But there's always a way to rank high for particular things. So that's one of the things around SEO, isn't it? Like I know for us, 
that we don't rank very highly for marketing agency Auckland, I think would be probably down on page five. But if you look for Zoho consultants, we're on the first page. Or yeah, actually, exactly. Because yeah. I'm not, so, so let's just talk a little about, because I've just jumped into something and people go, I don't know what you're talking about. But for you, one of the tricks with SEO is to find holes, isn't it? Of where things, people aren't really talking about things, but people are looking for it. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the first things that you do when you start like an SEO project, um, well, I've, I've kind of, I've nailed mine down to these three things. So I'll just oh, great. These. I'm going to make some notes. Yeah. They're called my three key growth levers for SEO. And once you pull these three levers, you essentially unlock um, more or less guaranteed SEO results. I'm excited. You know, this yeah. is going to be in the stuff article. I'm going to call them Ben's three key growth levers because yeah. I'm, I'm writing them down. Good, great, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can share my screen later as well if that's something we can do and I can, I can showcase stuff as well. Is that okay if I share my screen? It's going to be mainly audio. As long as you can describe it, it's okay. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, I can do a bit of both, but for now I won't. So there's three key growth levers. Um, two of them are focused on optimizing what you've currently got. And the last one is focused on continual work or consistency, yeah. which is really important in life for anything um, as well as business. So the first key growth lever is Google My Business optimization. Google My Business is that thing that appears on the map when your business pops up there so again if we use like flower delivery Auckland and your shop pops up on the map and you can see it there that's your google my business doing some good work for you it is pretty much like the easiest and quickest way to get immediate results on google especially if you're a local business so if you're a local physical business optimizing your google my business is like the quickest easiest way to get more traffic to your to your business I'll go and, I can go into more detail in a second, but I'll just start. Um, this is good. Two. So key growth lever number two is website optimization, which is a pretty big umbrella term. But essentially that means your website needs to be fast. So it needs to have a high speed. Yeah. It needs to have low errors or no errors. They always kind of pop up every now and then. You don't have to worry about it, an error here or there, but like not many. And, um, and then you need to have your website optimized for SEO. And what I mean by that is there's things called header tags and titles yeah. and stuff on your website. So just going through each page and making sure each one, essentially long story short, every page should serve a purpose. It should rank for a certain keyword and it should be about something. So it's just the process of going through each page and saying, this page is about this. And you do that by optimizing your title tags and header tags and stuff like and that. And I just, um, I know we're going to go into more detail, but I want to just bring this up because this is one that I do, this is something I do understand this year because it merges into content marketing for me. So I kind of get it. Um, but this is the most common thing that I see my, my strategy clients not understanding because in Google, like I explained, Google's blind. And so it's looking at this coded thing. So it's just seeing there, it doesn't see things pretty. But often people will go H1. They think that that means heading. So they put whatever their heading is for that pages. And sometimes it might say about us or something like that. And that's all. Right. It but it doesn't actually, when, you, when Google mm -hmm. sees that, it doesn't tell us anything about that person's business. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so, so have, heading is different to an H1 tag is what we're saying. Sometimes it's the same, but sometimes it's different. Yeah, this is where it can get a bit, a bit chunky depending on yeah. what website you're using. Yeah, but generally yeah. speaking, yeah, look for, look for the word H1, H2. Header tag is, is, is pretty much the same thing. It's a safe bet to say it's the same thing. Sometimes it will say header one, header two, because H stands for header. Mm. Um, but then sometimes I'm not too sure you might get a website that is just one off. Um, yeah, so it, it can be a bit. It can be tricky, but that would be, that's basically one of the things that can be quite a quick fix in terms yes. of fixing optimization is working on those H1 and H2 tags. Yeah, because yeah. you can go like, you log into your website, like the, the admin side where you can edit stuff, and then you can literally just click on each page and it'll say, some websites have a tab there where it says SEO. Yeah. You look for your header tags, your, um, your meta titles, your meta descriptions, and those are the things that you just want to, be clear on yeah. yeah yeah and let's just talk about that meta description because i know we're I, I think this is a thing i know a lot of my clients notice i just recently did a strategy with someone and they had no meta descriptions yeah, um, yeah. and so when you search for them on google what would happen if you don't have a meta description it would pull content from the page that's already there 
and usually that just means like it tries to make it sound good but it'll just pull whatever text is in the in the, the corresponding place and it'll just shove it in there so you might so get what, weird yeah, so yeah. meta description is basically helping someone if they were because everything we talk about seo but really it's about how to make someone trust you when they're searching for you and find you right yeah, so, so two things there so seo is all about making your website and your online presence really clear to google and really clear for people yeah and about a decade or more ago it used to all be about making your website clear to google you didn't have to really worry about people so you could so, be really gnarly that was and just days. that's when i loved seo that was great yeah, easy right <laughs> I, used to, I used to be i used to be employed by a company where i had to write um keyword rich blogs and they were four this is this is embarrassing they were 400 word blogs i would get paid per blog or per thing and i used to have to put that keyword in 10 times oh my god really 400 word thing and I was, I was supremely good at it. Like, you know, like I just was so good at finding ways to put, um, you know, resort, resort and uh, romantic resort, ahutaki or something like that in there over and over and over again without it sounding too bad. And yeah. now I'd look, oh my gosh, imagine having to read that. Imagine yeah. having the experience of reading that would be horrific. Yeah, because the, the irony is that the reason back then we wanted to optimize our websites for Google is so that Google would know what your website is about. So then it could deliver it to the people who need it the most. Yes. And it's kind of like we went in this circle where we almost made our content harder to, you know, like you said, like you try to make it as understandable as possible, but we're trying to help a machine to help people. And now we can kind of just think, oh, you know, how can I help people? Which is really nice because yeah. Google's algorithms have gotten so much better that if you literally just write stuff and optimize stuff to make sense for people, you're more or less going to win at SEO, which is really cool. Like, yes, there's technical stuff to understand, but it's a lot more people focused. Which um, is really nice. I, so can we just talk about that word algorithm? Because I use it all the time as well. I use it in Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how you would explain what algorithm means? An algorithm for SEO is essentially... What, what physically happens is that this little, let's call it a machine or a bot, yeah. crawls through your website and it reads everything on your website. So it just reads all the texts, all the alt tags. I can't see, it can only read. So it goes through and it reads everything. And once it's read everything, let's just say a page, once it's crawled a page, that's the technical term. Once it's crawled a page, it'll decide um, how optimized that is or what it will do is say this page is most appropriate for this thing and it will kind of like give it a score and put it in like a bucket and then that bucket is then con like within that bucket there's hundreds of thousands tens of thousands of other pages that talk about similar content and then using its little rules and its scoring system it's just sweet this is the most relevant one for this keyword and then this one's place number two this one's place number three so basically like the algorithm means it reads it gives it a score and then you either rank high or you rank low depending on how optimized you are. Yeah. So and I think this is important in terms of like, I under, I don't understand some technical stuff about SEO, but one of the things I love about it and what people get cross is they say, I want to rank number one on Google. And Google's intent is to rank what they believe the person who is looking for you wants. Yes. So your job is, from what I understand, your job is to give the clearest sign to Google that they are going to keep this person who's just searched for flower delivery Auckland, the happiest person, not get annoyed at Google, go, damn, this wasn't working. I have to think of something else. They want to give the right answer right away. And that's the job, right? Yeah. Solving people's problems and answering their questions. Those are the two things that Google tries to achieve when dealing out SEO rankings. So, so you're 100% right. Cool. Cause it's like, like, I know that it's a robot, but that's a very human behavior. Yeah, we built it, right? Yeah, to help people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so I think with SEO, I think like, this is cool for me. I feel like this is an SEO counseling session just for me. I feel <laughs> a lot more attached to SEO already now because yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it and I'm not looking at it from a, oh, I get so lost trying to work out the tricky keywords I have to do. And I'm a relational person. So now I'm going, this is a relationship between me and my ideal customer. And I'm mm -hmm. using Google to help me find that by showing Google that I'm a trustworthy person for the, the person that's using their machine to find me. 
yeah, hundred percent. And that's um, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm very emotive and emotional as well. And I explain a lot of my things through relational means as well. And literally, since I first started, the way I learned how to explain SEO was to say, "Hey, we're here to help solve people's problems and answer their questions." And then, of course, the whole buyer persona thing comes in, right? And like, yeah. you can't actually do SEO if you don't understand your people. So we need to understand your people first. So we understand your people, what their pain points are, what their problems are, what they're looking for. And then from that, we then decide what these keywords could potentially be and what these pages should be. And then we write for that and all that kind of stuff. I yeah, really, so really like that. I re so we talked about the three growth levels that you talked about levers. We've got the first is Google My Business, which we will come back and talk to. Um, we might have to do a couple of episodes, Ben. Um, <laughs> the second one is website optimization. And we talked about, you know, things like it has to be fast, uh, make sure that it's optimized um and that you've got all that kind of technical seo which is that's the stuff that i think you know we often do a report on technical seo or check that and it's different from content seo that they're related yeah. but it's different like fast um alt tags and hmm. favor all those little Favicons. things yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah like all those little bits um you know does it have a, a schema like all those technical things that everyone are going la 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 la, la i don't want to listen <laughs> yeah. those are the first two what's the third so the third one, you kind of mentioned it. Um, so the third one is a content and backlink plan and implementation. So this is the consistency piece. Um, you mentioned content SEO. Yeah. That's essentially what this is. It's about getting a plan around what your content's gonna be about. And you do that by building out your buyer personas and then building out your topic clusters, which is ways of doing SEO content, doing content SEO. And then um, a backlink plan as well, um, as well as implementation of that. So this one requires a bit more explanation. So the, this, it's kind of like a double whammy. There's two things in here. And the reason I've bundled them is because they're the two consistency pieces that do need to happen each month, which is consistently building backlinks and consistently writing content. So backlinks first. A backlink is just a link from another website that links to yours. So if you clicked on that, it would take you to that website. And you get ranking from Google for the more backlinks you have that point to your website. Because essentially what that does is it's giving Google signals that people trust you and are talking mm. about you and are mentioning you. And just like social profiles, the more followers and mentions and stuff that you get, obviously the more relevant you are because you are reaching more people with your message and whether you're helping people or entertaining people, whatever it is. So that's essentially what backlinks are. They're indicators, they're leading indicators to Google to say, oh, this person's being talked about a lot or this website's being mentioned a lot. Therefore, they must be helping people. Therefore, we should reward that and rank them higher so they can help even more people because that's the whole point of SEO. Love it. Yeah. So those are, um, there's quite a bit involved with figuring out how to get a bit of a backlink plan going. And that's probably the hardest part of SEO. That is the hardest bit, I think. I think, especially for time stretch small business owners, that's where it's really good to look at. That's So I, I think you can get wins as a small business owner yourself by working on Google My Business with help with a coach or someone giving you direction. Google My Business, um, the, you know, the getting that kind of structural stuff in your website. Like even if you're not doing your own website, you can often give that to a web developer and, or designer and go, can you fix this stuff? They normally have a good understanding of those things. Yeah. Um, and the content, you know, once a bit, you've got a bit of structure. But that backlink thing, I do think that unless you've got a particular type of brain or you've got the mental headspace, that is when it does become a good idea to use someone. Would you agree with that? Those, those are the two things, yeah. You need to get it, you need to want it, and you need to have the capacity for it. So yeah. you, do you know EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System? No. It's this cool methodology um, that I got super into a few years ago, and there's a, a few books written on it, and you can essentially like run your business off this model. It's very cool. Um, but one tool they used was this thing called a people analyzer, and it was basically um, analyzing the people in your business and seeing if they're a fit for, for your company. Yeah. And you go through all your core values and make sure they're all aligned. Mm. And then the last three pieces are, do they get it? Do they want it? And do they have the capacity to do this? And this is really important for, for business and life in general. But do you get it? Which is, is your brain hardwired in a way to understand those things? And kind of like, yes, I know how this works. And you kind of just, you're there. Want it means you wake up out of bed going, yes, I enjoy this work and I want to do it. And then capacity means you've got the experience or knowledge to actually fulfill that, that role. So what you mentioned before is like 100% like backlinks to require the type of person that gets it, wants it, and has the capacity to do it. And 
it's a mission finding those people. Um, like you, you need to find people that fit and everything. For every yeah, role that they do, and right? sometimes those people aren't like, are you quite good at that? By the way, no, I am not. That's the opposite of me. Yeah, because I was going to say, if you'd said yes, I would have said you are quite unusual then, because I can tell that you're from that people contenty, beautiful that that feeling, yeah, yeah. which is me too, and that side there, like like without like honestly if you're an seo person you probably won't be listening to this anyway because you'll be like dudes you're not talking about backlinks enough but if you're one of those people you like they tend to be like really just and i, I use this word in the best way geeky mm -hmm. love just like finding the holes and the gaps and things like that they really thrive on that and when you try and do soft stuff like but i want it to feel this way they're like i don't want i'm not, I'm not interested in that yeah generally yeah. generally you, but here's yeah. how we're gonna make it work yeah, yeah. and what i love about what I do in SEO yeah. is that it's both sides of the coin, right? You need both. And I focus on yeah, the buyer percentage, the content, how to bridge things together. And then I've got Om who actually goes and does the hard technical Amazing. work and explain it to people as well and boom, 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 boom geek out on it. So it's really uh, important. Look, I'm actually really excited about this because I teach a strategy around kind of like creating a, those, you know, we talked about those like buckets of content or I think you I don't know how you phrase it clusters. yeah and I was like those classes I teach a structure for that for everything that's that's necessarily not off the website I suddenly went ah I can bring that into the structure mm -hmm. and it would work super well so I got excited from that um nice. so okay so let's go back and talk about Google my business it has been changed it's now called Google business right like they've taken the my out of it um I think it's still Google my business um, or they I think I heard that they're changing it from Google My Business to Google Business at some point. Right, okay. Might have been when you were at that beach house. <laughs> <laughs> what have I missed? <laughs> yeah. Either way, it's fine. But regardless yeah. of it. Now, one of the things I do like saying to people with Google My Business, when they go, what is that? I go, look, you literally Google Google My Business and it will come up first in search. Yeah. And the other thing to do is to get into Google their exact business name even like to put their city or limited or whatever after and what that will do is google will pull through their exact business and then it shows it up there on the on the right hand side or left hand side or whatever so with I, with google my business let's talk about it because it is a hack now it is best for locally sites local businesses isn't it it's not so good if you've got like a national or international business it has some strength and power but it's really for ideal for people who are operating within a geographical area isn't it yeah and small businesses so small yeah. businesses and businesses that rely on certain areas and and then especially if you have an actual brick and mortar as well it's ludicrously important um because back in the day before we had the internet you know you wanted to get prime real estate you wanted to have your shop in town or on k road or key street or whatever it is and have that have that key spot um pun not intended for key street but what's happened now with the internet is that instead of two streets or five streets or ten streets in a city there's now hundreds and thousands of streets because you can google it and then you go and drive there so you're not limited by geography anymore so it's really important because google my business no matter where you are in auckland now you can actually rank well for auckland and people will come to you interesting i kind of like bringing you into the digital world yeah digital storefront i do think quite often i've been thinking i was thinking about this this morning how i get frustrated when someone says i don't want to spend more than three thousand on a on a website but quite happily fork out 20k for shelving and things in a shop and i do think that we have to start taking our websites and digital marketing seriously because like i've i've got clients who make millions off their website every year yeah just off their website like you know it's got other things going on with it but that website is bringing in more revenue sometimes in their physical office or their physical store that they mm -hmm. wouldn't think about more think second about buying expensive desks or things for mm -hmm. yeah um, it's incredible it is you know so it is important so so with your with your google my business and i think we might have i might have you on at some point just to come through and we'll do like a proper google my business one because i think we could talk about that in yeah, depth sure. um but what would you recommend with google my business just as the basics for people to make sure that they're doing so google my business is essentially it's, un it's important to understand what it is it's a directory so you know back in the day how you had like you know yellow pages and then we moved to yellow and now we've got oh. online directories like gopher and 
There's a few other Auckland based ones as well. So Google My Business is like the ultimate directory. So if you thought about like, oh, it's amazing if I had my business listed in all these directories, because then people would pick up the phone and call me because I'm in the phone book. This is like the ultimate version of that because it's Google's. And the only game we really play at the moment is rank on Google. It's the only game that exists. So it is the directory to have. Um, so it's incredibly, incredibly important to optimize your Google My Business as much as possible, because if you're not, you're going to have an unoptimized directory listing and then everything else kind of just falls through the cracks. So that's really important <laughs> um, as a concept. I, I, I'm just like, I never thought about explaining it as a directory. That was just genius. My mind has been blown. Yeah, right? Like it's every like day we jump on Google head. search for stuff. That's the yeah, only directory that, that really so matters. Sense. I yeah. love it. I love it. Okay. So, so, so optimizing it would include what? What sort of things would we want to see on there? So the main things, there's only really a few. Um, the, the, broad, the broad, easy one to do is just log into your Google My Business and fill out everything. So it's just like, yeah. you know, like the dates, you, um, the, the times you're open, your information, your title, like all that kind of stuff. Fill in every single gap because if you don't, Google's going to reward somebody else for filling in the gaps. So it's the easiest but, thing to yeah. do. Just fill in, fill in the blanks. Just do it all. Um, in terms of priority, what are the most important things to fill in? Your title which is right at the top, you is really, really, really stupidly important because as what well, Google goes, oh, that's who you are and what you do. So we'll rank yeah. for that. So what you want to do is you want to say what you do, where you do it, and who you are. Ideally in that order, but if you'd like to start with your name, you can. Um, so yeah, what you do is really important because that's like the key word that Google will take. It's like, oh, these people deliver flowers where you do it, Flower Delivery Auckland. So we're Flower Delivery Auckland, and then our name is X. So Flower Delivery Auckland dash name. It's Maybe. interesting. It's it's all, it's all actually really interesting that you say that because I see this happening across all types of other platforms like Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, all those ones. There is this thing, this two-year-old inside us that when someone says, put what you put the most important thing there we just want to go this is our name yeah but, we, <laughs> yeah. but that means nothing because people aren't searching directly for your name necessarily they're looking for what you do and whether you're close to them or whether you can be someone that can help you yeah right flowers near me or flower delivery in Auckland so I need flowers to love it they're not searching for your name <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so like that is but we have an innate because I get people to do that for Instagram I say don't put like the name of your brand underneath you know where the name is put you know educational toys New Zealand or whatever, so that people mm. know that it's for there. So mm. I love that. I think that's very, very good. So put that priority title in. And then right below that is a thing called um, category, service yeah. category or primary category. Um, you just want to put in the one thing that represents you the best. And then you can also do a couple secondary ones, but you don't want to flood that. You kind of just want to keep it like, what's the main thing that represents you the most broadly? Stick with that one. And then Google will go, this is your category. Because if, again, if you throw heaps at it, you're confusing it. And then it's going to water down basically kind of your potential mm -hmm. in a way. What we talked about before earlier, really, a little bit about niching down, right? So we want to say what you do and then a couple of secondary categories is fine as well. And then going down from there, what you want to do is there's a product section and a services section. You just want to make sure all your products and services are in there and listed even if you don't want to display prices, but if you are happy to do prices, you can do prices and price ranges and all that kind of stuff as well. And the benefit for that is, A, you're filling in the blanks. Um, you're giving more context and the more you can give, the better. But also this information then showcases on the actual Google results page when people search for you. So they might actually type in your name and then because you've listed a product, sorry, they might type in your service and or product, or they might be searching for a product without a brand attached to it. Yeah. And then your product might actually pop up with your Google My Business because you've listed it there with your prices and there's pretty pictures and all that kind of stuff. So again, it's the ultimate directory, right? We want to give Google as much ammo as possible to make sure that we're showcased first. Because I guess the thing is that in the old days, if you had like, if you were going to do the yellow pages, because I don't know who uses it now, but um, don't hate on me yellow, but it's the truth. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in the old days, you had to pay like 
heaps more to get a full page ad. And if you did that, you're going to put that effort in. This is a free tool. It's free. It just takes your time. It's almost you immediate. To lavish it with your time and pour your love and time and attention into it to yeah, make yeah. the most of it. Yeah. But it's once you've done it, you've done it. Yeah, yeah. well, this is the thing. Like coming back to my story of um, being a dog trainer in 2015, I still get phone calls like one or two a week. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, like, I need to take down my pages and Google my business because <laughs> people still call me because they search for dog trainer and I just pop up because I'm in the Southeast Auckland area yeah. and I still get calls. And it's like, I could have a, a functioning part-time business with zero effort solely because I've got to Google my business, not even a website anymore. So that's pretty amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so just as, by the way, it is quite hard to remove a Google My Business page <laughs> once it's gone. That is the truth, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is. You can put close, but people don't even look at the close sign. Yeah, you just got to figure out, I think the most important thing, well, for me anyway, is making sure where your number is. Because it's on your social profiles, it's on your Google profiles. Oh, yeah, trying to remember that stuff. That's that's where that attention to detail person's great because they want to put it in a spreadsheet somewhere. Yeah, I just walk then, away. I'm done now. And then yeah, I'm like up. that. Oh. I'm, a, I'm like that with putting my name in directory stuff. The first time I did it, I didn't even take note of what I'd done or my passwords. And when I had to change something, I was like, I don't know how to get back in there. I have to change yeah. all the passwords. Now I just yeah. give that job to someone else. So you put the pictures in and the product and services section. I love the idea of filling in the blanks because that's such an easy way to kind of think what that looks like like hmm. Hmm. so you can see um on the left hand side of google my business this is where all the sections are yeah. so just go through each section just look at it all like look at it all read it all fill in all the blanks because it's all important stuff so actually give it that time like you said because that's really really important um there's a few more key points one of them is photos so yeah. you want to jump in your photo section and actually add um ideally you know like 50 plus photos that wow. represent and then what you do and the reason for this is it's getting into slight technical SEO land. You can just do a few, um, but the reason you want to do more is because you actually want to keyword tag all of your photos before you upload them. Okay. So you can say, you know, flower delivery, Auckland, car wash services, Auckland's on the images themselves. Because again, Google's a bot, it reads. So it'll crawl through that Google My Business and it will read all of your images and go, oh, car wash Auckland, flower delivery Auckland, this, that, this. <laughs> that is so good. It. And if you want to go extreme, you can even geotag photos as well. There's a tool called GeoSetter that I used to use and then I very quickly delegated it because it was very technical and admin heavy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you essentially can actually geo, you can put in longitude and latitude of, um, of the photos as well. So and you just map those to wherever your location is. And again, you're giving Google those signals like we're here, we're here, we're here. This is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we do. Every single photo is a signal Super to do. Clever. Super clever. Okay, yeah. so we've got, we've done, um, we talked about filling in all the gaps, um, making sure that you've got your pictures in there, uh, making sure the category is right, making sure your title's right. The photos is a major, is a, I, I've got some, but I haven't put that, um, put those tags on them. So I'm going to, I'm going to get someone on my team to fix that for me. Cool. So I've learned something. I'm quite excited. I've always loved Google My Business, but this is cool. I'm getting excited. Yeah. About it's quite yeah, you can, yeah. You can and is there anything else that you need to really think about on Google My Business? Yeah. Probably the two biggest ones. Um, well, the one biggest one is reviews. You need yes. to have reviews because when you search for your flower oh, delivery yeah. Auckland, if you've got three reviews and you know, you've got three and a half yeah. stars overall and someone is over there with 35 star reviews and looks incredible. It's social proof. You immediately go to those people. Um, now I want so, to talk about. Can I talk about this? Because um, <laughs> two things. I have a one star review on my um, my thing. My my yeah, reviews. I've got over one hundred and forty positive reviews, and then one one star from mm -hmm. someone who I had a strategy time with. He didn't turn up, so I rang to ask where he was. And he took exception to that, so sent me and right. put a nasty review. Um, people shouldn't fear nasty reviews. Not at all. They should respond to them, even if it's a troll. Respond to every single review, okay. even if it's a troll. Even if even if you did provide bad service, you just respond to it. And if it is a troll or something you disagree with, you can report or those things, and then Google will follow up and they can actually remove them for you. But the most important thing on Google My Business is to show that you're you're alive and yes. you're present and you're doing stuff. So if you're responding to all the reviews. People are saying, you can see three weeks ago, one day ago, two days ago, you're there and alive. And if it's something that is like a shop, right, that you'd go into, it gives you that energy to be like, oh, these people are around, they're about, there's a post it's from trust. them. Because you post on Google My Business too, there's a post it's from them, there's a recent review and all that kind of stuff. And 
it adds like you, you know marketing is you know there's so much psychological context that goes into it right yeah. a lot of subconscious patterns that go on as well and you load up your flower delivery organ search and you see the one that's got the most reviews and there's recent ones and there's photos and people are replying to reviews like oh these people look fantastic mm. it's a no-brainer you just go there and in terms of relative effort it's not that much to make sure you're asking for a review and you're responding to it and so i'm just going to say one thing here one of the things i've started doing because of this is i'm consciously when i go somewhere like if, you know like hospitality is hurting with lockdowns and things like that and changes if I'm going to a small business at the moment, I'm really taking the effort to take a photo and do a review as mm. much as possible, because that is a way that we can all help each other in this world is to review. And, and I would just say, though, if you have a negative experience, please always just go to the owner of that business first and try and resolve it directly. Don't use Google. I've only once done it with Google where I've given a negative review and it was when I tried to call, email, contact and do this stuff and got ignored. And then as soon as I put something on Google, it got resolved. But yeah. you, know, you don't want to do that. You want to try, like if you're going to review, be nice about it. Give a owner a, a, a chance to fix something before you go and make it public. Yeah, 100%. Just, yeah. I just thought they'd add that in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. That's kind of, it's, it's, it's a social space, right? The whole yeah, I think so. Space. I think it's really important. So we've got title, we've got categories, we've got pictures, um, and we've got we've got products and, and filling that in, filling the gaps. Photos, reviews. We talked a little bit about um, posts and doing weekly posts. Is there anything else that we need to put in there? Um, I would just say automate as much as possible that review process, bank it in somewhere so that link always just gets sent out to customers. Yeah. There are people out there who do automate it for you. And there's a company called Review You that's in Hamilton that will actually set up automated processes for you. So you've always got reviews going out, but there's heaps of um, companies that kind of do that stuff. It's just important to follow up. And the last one would be FAQ section as well. So yeah. FAQs is when people ask questions and then you can answer them and then it appears on Google. Mm -hmm. You can actually do it yourself. You can ask your friends to jump on and say, hey, could you please ask this question? Could you please ask this question? And then you log on and you just answer them all. And again, that's really beneficial because people can see that search page and then it's just more context again, right? Everything we just discussed. And I, I've, I have to admit, I've got one on there, which is like, um, you know, what are the benefits of having a marketing strategy? And I often show it to clients and go, someone just may have been someone I know, asked this question and I just happened to be able to write a beautiful response to it. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, it so, does yeah. help. Yeah, so that's people my business, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's actually, actually it's good because I might put a, that reminds me for that, I should put one on there about how we don't do like monthly management. So that's actually quite a good one to- Yeah, about that. and on that note, actually, um. I think for the majority of what we've talked about today, I've got an SEO like checklist on my website. Can, we and, put, um, if you, can you give me a link to it and we'll put it in the show notes? Yeah. It will be I, amazing. I do, I do a video walkthrough for every single point. So everything oh, that we it just It will be amazing. We'll put it yeah. in the show notes. It'd be fantastic. Hmm. So, okay. So we, I mean, we haven't got through, we've talked about the three key levers. We've got Google My Business website optimization. We haven't really covered content and backlinks. And, and I think that probably, I'd love to have you back on and we could talk about that content side because yeah, sure. I think that'll be really awesome. Um, if people want to have heard of you and they've got a business that has that, impact type business sustainable business because that's where your real love and passion is yes. um how would they get hold of you um just on my website it's probably the easiest way really um jump on teamempathy.co.nz and just get in touch um there's usually always buttons somewhere to to get in touch with me and book connection calls i love like you probably chatting to people so everywhere um i have my little connection call thing and there's like a little little chat we can do to catch up 20 or 30 minutes so I'd say the website's the best way to do it. Just get in touch with the website or my email would be at teamempathy.co.nz. Just shoot me an email or um, LinkedIn. Message me on LinkedIn. Okay. Can I just say to people who are maybe more introverted like me, like I'm quite introverted, um, Ben's not scary. So don't feel like he's doing this whole book of time because he's just going to snarl you with a whole lot of sales speak. He will genuinely want to know mm -hmm. about you. Um, that is just the best way he operates is with those calls because often people use them as lead gen and things like that. Ben will actually be quite happy to natter away with you. He might even do it while he's walking the dogs on the beach. Yeah, have to do that. That's how he connects. So just, I want to say that because I think a lot of people use that technique, but this is actually a heart thing for you. 
yeah. This is how you best interact with people is with that people contact. 100%. Yeah. I love talking to people. I love how. It's been a huge pleasure. We had to wait a long time to do this podcast. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> All good. And I'm going to um, go and find my next gap in my podcast schedule to have you back on and we'll do some stuff around content because this was awesome. Yeah, cool. Is that all right? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a real pleasure having you on today. Um, everyone that's listening, there'll be links in the show notes to everyone to things that Ben has covered. And I've also written down those three growth levers. So in the outro, I'm going to have a little recap of those two. So you can check. Plus, I made notes and I made a list of those key facets for Google My Business. So I'm going to run through those in a little list too that you can listen to in the outro. Um, and of course, any questions, go back to Ben and ask some questions. You can do that. Or you can come and join our Map It Marketing group on Facebook. I can endeavor to ask questions. And then if I get stuck, I'll come back to Ben and uh, get him to help me with those. So thank you so much, Ben. It's been a huge pleasure. Um, it's lovely having you on. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. In a weird time jump of the internet, I am recording this outro a week after I interviewed Ben. And I want to tell you my progress around SEO. I think I've fallen a little bit in love. I was so inspired by his useful practical strategies around Google My Business. I now have a big list of stuff that we have to do, not just for us, but for some of our clients. And I also felt really excited about using keyword research for other things like YouTube and Pinterest and TikTok. Who knew that I was going to have my mind change so much? Here's a few things that I just recommend getting started with. Definitely go and start with your Google My Business page. Fill in all the gaps, just like Ben said. Uh, you can create some images on Canva and then name the images, each one of them with your keywords. Then when you download them, they are automatically added. That alt tag is already added. That's a bit of a hack for you. And then you can upload them easily into Google My Business. And if you're not too sure what keywords to use, you can use a tool like Ubersuggest. Uh, that's a great one or other keyword tools if you've got one that can help you find those keywords. I'll put a link to that in the show notes so you can use that. If you're really stuck, obviously, go and talk to Ben. He's fantastic. He knows what he's talking about and he'll help you work out a really clear SEO content strategy for your business. Right, next week we're talking to one of my colleagues, Tracy Smith. She is one of our marketing strategists. She's also an expert when it comes to email marketing automation. She's used it in her own e-commerce business to get a very healthy six-figure business as a side hustle to everything else that she does in just over a couple of years. Plus, she is one of our marketing automation specialists. And we're going to talk about all the email marketing that you need to be doing for an e-commerce business. So tune in. It's going to be a goodie. If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.